Hi, Dostard here again. So, today some more basic knowledge about racing homing pigeons. Um, these segments that I'm doing also, I'm, I'm doing these for kids that want to start out and get into racing pigeons. Maybe they just have an interest in even just having a few pigeons for just to fly around. Who knows? Okay, but, uh, um, you know, let's just cover the basics. I'm not going to be teaching any old guys that have been doing it for 40 years anything. So, all right. Um, how about eggs? How many eggs can a racing pigeon have? Well, they can have quite a few in a year. You shouldn't let them have too many in a year. Say uh, three rounds would be, I would say, the maximum that I would allow. And I've noticed that if you let them have three rounds, towards the third round, their eggs mean more to them than their baby. So, all right? Two. Racing pigeons have two eggs. They set two eggs. Okay? So from the time you put your pigeons together, male and a female, hopefully, and I have accidentally put together two males, and um, it'll happen to the best of us. Okay, so hopefully a male and a female, if you put them together, it'll take around eight days, ideally, for them to uh, have eggs. Okay, so once they get their eggs, then they're going to set those eggs and it's anywhere from about 17 to 19 days you can expect your babies to hatch. Now you should allow those babies to be weaned off by their mothers. Now I know there's a lot of people that they take them away at all kinds of ages but I mean 32 days is about the youngest that you really want to take your, your babies away. And it's better to let them wean off naturally. It's also better if you have a young bird section. Now I don't have a young bird section, so I allow my birds to go to 40 days, then I move them in with my team. Now when a team has freedom, you won't find the problems that you would say in the cock loft, like I showed in my basic knowledge too. I think it was basic knowledge too. You know, the behavioral one. Uh, if they're allowed to, to be at random and fly freely, uh, you just don't get those problems. I, I don't really know why, but freedom has something to do with it, I guess. So, okay, uh, another thing. Uh, do you have to have a great big elaborate loft just to have some racing pigeons? Well, no, you don't. Uh, the only thing is if you're in a climate like I am, where it's minus 48 degrees Celsius in the winter, your pigeons have to be able to fly up and fly around because uh, you're not going to be flying them in a blizzard in minus 48 and they do do a lot of sitting but they still have to be able to move to generate energy you know they puff their feathers up but they still need to move and I feed them a lot of corn in the winter corn is good for carbohydrates which provides a lot of energy alright so there's another thing for you is that corn is uh, an energy provider but it burns a lot faster. Carbohydrates burn faster than proteins do. Okay, so the higher carbohydrate foods, corns burn faster. Peanuts burn slower. Okay, so, but if you're in a warmer climate, all you really need is a little 4x5 loft, you know, almost something like a rabbit cage. As long as them birds can be out, get out flying, uh, you know, they're going to be fine. Don't let them fly out, sit around on top of your loft all day. It's, that's called open loft. A little open loft is okay, but not too much. Like you can allow them out maybe once a week, peck around on the ground and stuff, but don't get in a habit of letting them sit around and landing on fences in people's houses, okay? You want to teach them to trap in quickly into their trap hole, and that's it. That's where they remain until evening when you're going to fly them again. Say fly them twice daily if you're in a nice warm environment. And, uh, you know, even once daily, as long as you get them out and fly, you're not going to have troubles, okay? But now, um, to run a really good loft, I think you need a minimum of, of at least six sections, which I myself don't have, unfortunately. But you need a, a, a breeding cock, a breeding hen, you need a team section, boys and girls, okay, you need a young bird section, and uh, then you can also have like a widowhood cock section, it's good, it would be really ideal to have six sections, but you don't need to do that, and that would be like six, six by six sections, so now you're starting to see where 
I mean, there's men that build, and women, gigantic uh, buildings to house pigeons, and they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on this stuff. So, but this is for you guys out there, kids and and the whatnots. All right. Um, when you get more interested, even if you have just a few pigeons, say you have six pigeons and you want to race in a club, which I don't race clubs, I race one loft races. As far as training my pigeons, I just do that with my family. We flip a coin for a team and, and off we go. And that's how we learn how good our pigeons are. Okay, so what you're after is to get pigeons that can fly. And the only way you're going to be able to get that is to put them in boxes, Take them away, let them go. Start out maybe slow. Some guys will say 20 miles, some guys not. Well, I think you're better to go a couple kilometers on your first toss. Let them go up where they can actually see the loft. Come back home. And then start slowly incrementing out from there. You know, maybe go again at 2 or 3 and then go to 4 kilometers and then 10 kilometers and then from there you're starting to move quickly out 25 and then 50 and then 100 and so forth. Once they get out to 100 kilometer tosses you can pretty well take them almost any distance from there all right and like I said you don't have to have 100 pigeons to do that you can do that with six pigeons you know always keep yourself a couple breeders back but if you got a rabbit cage you can really only have six pigeons or so in there maybe eight and uh, that's about it. Okay, what else can I cover for you guys? Um, so one other thing, um, I don't know if you noticed in my tossing segment there, um, I use banana boxes. They're, they're really good for tossing. You can use banana boxes or tomato boxes. You can make your own box. But banana boxes work real well. Um, you need to put a little bit of uh, hardware cloth over the top, don't use chicken wire, they can get their head through it, make it hardware cloth, no more bigger than probably a half inch, all right? And um, when you're putting your, your pigeons in, um, it'll take you a little while, but you'll learn, and I mean, when I first started, I, I had a little bit harder time telling a, a cockbird from a hen bird, now I'm pretty well 99.5%. There's still a few of them, they can be, cocks can be very henny at times, and uh, that can cause you a little problem. And of course, if you're a kid starting out and you only have six or eight birds or maybe 10 or 12 birds, it's going to be a lot easier. But it's a really good idea to not put more than about six birds in a box. And uh, when you put those six birds in there, to make sure, if you can, to keep your hens and your cocks separate. So now you can see if you have two banana boxes, you can toss 12 birds. You can push it a little bit too if you're only going for a really short toss. But when you go for the longer tosses, you start crowding them, and if, especially if it's hot, um, you know they need a lot of air to be healthy. They they really the rule about pigeons they gotta have air. Same thing with your loft. Okay, don't shut it up and make it into a greenhouse. You'll kill your birds, or they just never will be worth a darn. A little bit of uh, you know skylighting's okay. But uh, you need to have lots of air coming in. You can even put a little fan or, or something in there if you want. But basically, if you have an airflow, you know, through your loft, and if you want, you can put a, if you have a door, you can put a little uh, a wire down there with a little flap thing on it. But never leave, uh, you know, holes that mice can get into. You don't want mice in your loft because when you're cleaning your loft, you might pick up hantavirus from that. Okay, so you don't want mice in your loft. You don't want weasels in your loft, okay? And you don't want raccoons to be able to stick their arm through if you live where there's raccoons, because they'll get hold of your birds. And even hawks might come up, and I've had hawks just pouncing on, on uh, aviaries. So, you know, they can, if the pigeon's not quick enough, they can hook their feet through and, and hook one. So you don't want any bigger than, you know, 3 8 quarter inch hardware cloth. That's ideal. Same thing in your toss boxes, all right? Very critical when you're putting them in those toss boxes that they aren't crowded up. Well, too many people do that, and then the, the bird is suffocating in there. And I mean, they're never going to be worth a darn. Okay, now 100% the best pigeon in the world, you'd have paid a hundred thousand dollars for it if its health's not there and it's starved for oxygen. 
it's going to get lost and die on the way home from 10 miles. Okay, so that about covers it for today. I don't know what else I can touch on later, but who knows. More up and coming segments, hopefully, from Toss Start. See you guys. Bye.